Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next episode of Fails, and this is coming from the war against Canada A. Very close war. Uh, they actually didn't use some of their attacks. I'm not sure why, but they did have a bit of an engineered, uh, some some engineered bases. This isn't a war recap, so I'm not going to talk too much about the war. I'll probably do a war recap of this tomorrow because I want to show some of the awesome three stars. But today the focus is on the non three stars, the failed attacks, and what we can learn from them because I think you can learn. Um, sometimes more from fails than three stars, and that's why I want to highlight some of the the almost three stars that had a few mistakes, a few flaws in them, and what changes could have been made. Now, nothing against the people who didn't get the three star in this video that you'll see. Uh, sometimes hindsight, you know, hindsight, I guess, is always twenty twenty. So looking back, it's easy to say they could have done this, they could have done that. But the plans are pretty much solid for all the attacks you'll see. Just um, some things that might have been overlooked or might have been difficult to see in the planning stages. But once you drop those troops it can always end up going differently and uh, we'll, we'll kind of just be taking a look at some of the things some of the adjustments that could have been made to get the three star so this first base is uh, a kind of that ring base that we see this is a town hall 11 uh, captain cold's taking it on and he's going to try to get his miners to go into that core there he created the funnel at the bottom with the bowlers and the king sort of they kind of went off to the to join the miners, the queen created the funnel on the other side. Uh, there's the warden, everything moving through. But one thing um, I've noticed, and I've been experimenting with miners in farming attacks and multiplayer, so I've seen them against a lot of bases. Miners are not good troops for going through the core of a base. They're not good at taking out a two infernal compartment core or a, two, or a core that has both infernos, has all the expos, has the CC, the town hall, all that hit points and all the DPS in the core. Miners aren't going to just steamroll through a core. That's going to be Valks, Bowlers. Miners are more of a methodical troop, and you can see, even though he got a ton of level 4 miners into the core of the base, plus the Warden's ability, plus the heal spells, plus like a rage, they just don't move through the base that fast. And the power is them going underground and having their life prolonged by not taking any damage, but they're not going to go through a base quickly. So you can see, even despite all the spells and miners he had for the core still doesn't get that last inferno tower taken out so i think that the the overall plan of creating a funnel at the bottom with the king and some bowlers and the queen on the right side with the queen walk was good but maybe some valks would have been better um, especially the warden can help with the valks too uh, that's very powerful the valks move so quickly the three four seconds the warden gives them the invisibility or the invincibility that is uh the, the valks can get a lot done without taking any damage so i think valks would have worked better the miners just don't move through the base quick enough they're not good at taking out um the core that has two infernos miners are better for taking out parts of the base that might have one inferno um, some giant bombs, some regular defenses, but the entire two Inferno, all four Expo, Town Hall, CC, that's a ton of hit points. The Expos have a lot of hit points too, along with the Infernos. That's a ton of hit points. Um, the Skelly Traps too make it hard, and that's a ton of DPS. The Wizard Towers were also surrounding the core, so a uh, nice try, but I don't think the Miners are the right fit if you're trying to go straight through the core of the base. So let's take a look at a, um, a Town Hall 10 attack. Um, going to go over to my team here. It is Chaos with his second attack. And yeah, this is the right one. This is an interesting plan, but I think that uh, in principle, like you can't have a, an attack that has so many different phases that are all independent of one, each, of one another. And we talk on the channel, I, at least I talk about it. No one else talks on the channel, I guess. But I talk on the channel a lot about having your different uh, parts of your attack, your different components of your attack synchronized to a certain extent. So things are tanking for each other. So you're getting value by having stuff going on at the same time. In this circumstance, um, chaos, everything's too separate, which allows the, the different defenses of the base to deal with things separately. Now, this is a Town Hall 11, but it doesn't have the Eagle. So it's kind of similar to a Town Hall 10. The Warden definitely is not too friendly in there. But besides that, it's kind of a Town Hall 10 base, I think, for the most part. And some of the defenses is kind of Town Hall 9 level even. But you can see he did a, a queen charge to get that first Inferno. I'm all for that. Uh, was a bit of an investment. And he used, you know, two spells, the queen, all those healers. And the queen goes down right here. And that's not getting a great investment. And let me just pause this. I hate pausing because I know you get that annoys people. But just so I have time to talk. 
that's not a great investment if you're going to spend that much troop space on just that section of the base. The whole point of bringing healers is they take up 14 troop space. If you're going to bring four or five of them, that's a lot of space. You want the queen around for the entire attack. And the way that he could have uh, had his queen up longer would be to send those miners in, uh, send them in before the queen or about the same time the queen was going in so that the queen doesn't go down. So the, uh, the Tesla, the Grand Warden, those defenses lock onto the miners. Uh, they did have to deal with the golem, but they dealt with the golem anyway. You can see it doesn't kill them. As long as you have a heal spell on them, they would have been fine, especially if that inferno went down too. Uh, the, the miners could have been at full health when they dealt with that golem, and that was the case here. So I think that that would have worked out better. Now, he did come, up with, come in with a third part of the attack on the right side there with the king, some Valks. A little bit unlucky. I'm not sure what he could have done to change that, but a small change maybe with how he entered for that inferno would have allowed him to get that inferno tower taken out because that definitely was important for the attack. That also didn't go right. But the main thing, in my opinion, it, just taking a look at this attack, is you need the different parts to be synchronized to a certain extent. Had the queen taken out the inferno as the miners were moving in, they would have started tanking for her. He could have, you know, maybe use the ability a little bit later, use the rage earlier, or vice versa. But some way to keep his queen up a little bit longer in time for the miners to come through and allow her to get back up to full health because the queen is probably your most powerful end game troop, especially if she has healers on her because she's great at taking out defenses one by one and getting healed back up in between. So a uh, nice attack to chaos, nice try. Let's take a look at another, um, another town hall 10 attack. Yeah. Town Hall 10 attack. This is going to be a little bit different because it's a two-star attempt uh, by Gamarco. And it was so close. It was a good opener, but it's just the angle of entry that I think got him. So you'll see what I mean as this attack goes on. Uh, it's just a queen walk. We'll go ahead and fast forward. I don't want these attacks to take too long because I have quite a few to show. But the queen charge is perfect. She comes in. She's going to get that eagle taken out. The eagle can do a lot of damage to his Valks when they're in big groups. So wants to get that taken out and is able to do so without having to worry about the inferno. Uh, the queen also gets pretty good percentage. That baby dragon probably didn't get much value. So maybe not necessary. But, you know, it is what it is. He drops that next rage spell. Keeps the queen up. Still has her ability. And she'll get in here. She'll take out the eagle. Um, check out the CC troops as well. So that's the main things that his Valks would have to worry about. Right here, the single targeted Inferno locks on, pops the ability. Uh, the Queen's going to take out a few more buildings before she goes down. That's great. Got about half the percentage he needs. Got the Eagle, got the CC troops, the important stuff. Here's the problem. The angle of entry is right, look at those wall breakers, right here. It should have been right here. It should have been on the opposite uh, side of that compartment. And the reason is... Your troops end on the opposite side they begin. So the Valks come in on the um, top left of that compartment. And logically, they're just going to move down because the wall kind of adds some space in between. Plus, the town hall is a big building. So these buildings, to target the area between them, which is what Valks do, that's a little bit farther away than, say, continuing down the compartment. So the Valks, for the most part, are going to continue down to the bottom. They're going to take that jump spell into the core that has the CC. They're going to trigger all three of those giant bombs. Um, they're going to en engage the queen. They're not going to go for the town hall. The town hall was so easily accessible. It's right there. It almost goes down, even with the few Valks that did go into the core, um, but doesn't quite go down. Now, had he done the opposite, had he dropped his Valks um, or his wall breakers first right here and kind of made his way up along here, the difference is the Valks now end this compartment over around here. So they're going to take the jump and go straight up for this town hall. By doing it the other way, they end down here. They're going to go into the core. That's not going to get the town hall taken out. Uh, not enough of them went into the core. So very nice try. That wizard almost gets it too, but not quite. So uh, think about that. Think about uh, when you're sending your Valks into a big compartment, especially one that's that big, think about where they're going to end. And if you can change where they begin to affect how where they're going to end so they take the jump spell to the right location of the base you want them to go to um, okay let's take a look at a few town hall nine attacks uh where's the first one uh 16 um i think it's yeah puka pucka whatever um this is going to be his first attack we're looking at uh, against base number 12 <clears throat> um this is a seven healer attack so <clears throat> Excuse me, I made a video on this a little while back, 
because this is a powerful strategy. Um, you can see this is a Town Hall 10 base, but doesn't have the Town Hall 10 defenses, just a few army camps upgraded. I think it might have some max Teslas, I'm not sure. Some of the bases did, if I remember correctly. So these bases were kind of you know, borderline engineered. Some of them were clearly engineered. Some of them, it's kind of a blurry line. Uh, but anyway, comes in with the queen here, and this is a pretty simple uh, mistake. I don't, I don't want to call it a mistake, a pretty simple uh, thing that can go wrong that you might not uh, do anything that cause. It just that's how it works out. But it's something you have to think about while you're doing your planning. Uh, pretty unlucky, he loses a healer right there. But good placement on the seeking air mine by this defender. But right here, the queen walk is not going like the healers are going towards the base as they heal the queen um they're getting pulled de uh, deeper and deeper towards those walls so right here if you look at how he lured out the cc and the timing the, the the healers are actually closer to the cc troops than the queen is and that'll be true as soon as she steps up right there boom the healers are closer to the cc troops than the queen and if you if that's the case you're in some big trouble because the dragon can take out those healers very, very quickly. Um, the healers don't have as many hit points as you might think. Right there, the healers are already dead, and uh, I guess he misses the queen's ability because he was worrying about the healers. The balloons take her out. So even had the queen not, gone, not uh, missed the ability, even if he had tapped the ability, the queen still would have gone down because all the healers were down. Uh, so that's one thing to think about. This attack definitely would have been a three-star um, if he had been able to uh, to take out the the dragon or in the in the balloons and the CC troops and have the queen meet up with this kill squad, but that's what you have to look at when you're planning your attacks. I'll go ahead and fast forward because the rest is just uh, you know a solid entry, but not quite enough uh, without the queen and those four healers to do a whole lot in this space. But that's something you have to look at is is this are the CC troops going to come out at a point in time where the healers could be closer than the queen is and while you're planning that's how you have to look at it that's how you have to think when should I lure up lure out the CC troops um what angle should I do my queen walk at keep that in mind especially for a base where um you look at the compartments and you think you're starting your queen here she actually has to walk farther out as she moves along because the walls uh, stick out farther down here so she's actually moving close to the base to take out like this building right here then she's moving farther away that's probably going to draw the healers pretty close and uh, because they're air troops they have no reason to move f farther back when the queen does so keep that in mind on your queen walks you don't want those cc troops to target your uh, your healers when you're doing the lure on your on your queen walk um, but okay let's take a look at two more attacks um, this one is by our number 21, Jay Munez, his second attack here um, against, yeah, base 14. This is the one, and this one I wasn't exactly sure if there's one specific mistake I can point out, but I'll try to do my best as I take a look at this, because I like the idea of using the Golem Avalanche. I don't see that quite as much anymore, but I think it can be effective, especially if you use Bowlers with it, because the Bowlers are a great troop to sit back in addition to Wizards and take out defensive buildings. So one thing here is the Bowler Funneling, and we talk about it. I encourage you guys, if you haven't yet, go back and look at my Bowler Funneling how-to video, how to funnel bowlers inside the base, because he does not do the best job with second layer funneling. It's very difficult, but the cannon, the elixir storage are still up. Those are going to draw, or the elixir storage specifically, will draw, I think, three of his bowlers, maybe even four of them, uh, outside the base. They go down pretty quickly. So already he has less bowlers inside the base, and uh, things are moving forward, has the poisoned, but the king, I think, goes out a little bit far in front. And one thing is, I would say the jump spell, the problem is when you have, let me back up for a second as I try to think this through. When you have a base like this that has a kind of a ring, it has the dead space in the middle, which would make you think to do a golem avalanche attack. But when it has multiple compartments, you can see it has you know one here, another here. There's multiple layers of compartments surrounding that middle compartment. You have to be careful because even though you're moving in kind of a circle, there's a lot of uh, lateral movement within that. 
um, between jumping from compartment to compartment that could make it so your golems aren't doing all the tanking. Right here, the golems go into kind of one of these small satellite compartments on the outside. Uh, that way, the, a lot of wizards died, the queen's getting targeted. That's what you have to be careful about. When you don't have kind of one compartment that you can trust your troops will go through, when there's a lot of smaller compartments surrounding that dead space in the middle, your golems can kind of get wacky on you and not completely tank. So um, this strategy can be effective, don't get me wrong. And he actually goes on for a while here as we fast forward to take out another good piece of the base because the golems do, uh, do a lot of tanking. They have quite a bit of hit points re relative to the Town Hall 9 defenses. But you got to be very, very careful of how compartments can lead your golems astray. Because in this attack, it's so important that you can predict golem pathing. You know where they're going to go. And I guess on this base, it wasn't the clearest uh, pathing. Also, the bowlers weren't funneled in as well as they could have been. So two things, I guess, you could say added up to this not being a three-star. Maybe not the right attack for the base, but I think it could have worked out had he made those adjustments. Uh, one more attack for you guys. All the way down at 33, I think this is going to be a little bit of a lower level hero attack if I remember correctly. Uh, 33, this is his attack on uh, 35, so the first one there. Knight Ridas, and he's doing an HG, HB. So I guess it's kind of nice to be able to see some different attacks, uh, that are different strategies that are failing. Because uh, pretty much every strategy I've seen fail at one point or another. So uh, it happens to everything. There's not one strategy where you can say, that's a definite 3 star. Uh, but I guess that should be pretty obvious. Anyway, uh, the HGHB, probably not the best for this base. And my reasoning is this. Um, you can point out small things in this attack that might have been able to be done differently that could have helped him get the 3-star. Sure, you could point out those small things. But I think overall, this is not the best strategy for this base. And the reason is if you look at the base before it gets destroyed, I want to show this. The There's double giant bomb spots like right here. Uh, right here, right here, that's not necessarily the core. HGHB, you want to get in there, you want to trigger those giant bombs so your hogs don't have to deal with them because you don't have many hogs. Also, there's not a whole lot of defenses in the core. It's a very decentralized base. If you take a look at that, that's all non-defensive buildings in that little kind of mini core. Then even the kind of the uh, next uh, farthest in compartments. They only have expos and I guess a wizard tower. So all the point defense for the most part is spread out along the perimeter of the base. And I talked about this in a base destruction video a few videos back. But when you don't have that many defensive buildings in the core, HGHB cannot is not necessarily your best uh, go-to strategy. <clears throat> because the giants, the healers, that kill squad is not going to get very deep into the base. It's only going to take out the core usually, and there's going to leave the shell of the base for the hogs. But in this case, the shell of the base has a Tesla farm, it has double giant bomb spots, it has a lot of point defense. It's not the friendliest to hogs. A little bit unlucky with the Tesla farm. I think this was a first attack, so he didn't know it was there. Um, but the heal spell is not going to do much for these hogs because there's so much damage. The kill squad does move in, but all that means is there's a lot of the base that's not even being addressed right now where the queen's going to go down. He has another heal spell, but not really many troops to use it on. Uh, the healers are going down right here. So a, a nice try, but I think for this base... Maybe it would have taken a jump spell to make sure his troops actually go into the core. If he dropped a jump right here, that might have been more helpful. But even still, HDHB, when, you, when you're thinking about whether or, not, whether or not to use it, think about the core of the base. Is there a lot of defenses? Is there a lot of giant bombs? Is there a lot of stuff in general that you can disarm? Because it's HGHB, it, the giants are very durable. They can afford to take those giant bomb hits. They can take a lot from point defense. Uh, the healers do a great job under rage. So think about that. Uh, think, can you get good value? Can you take out those giant bomb spots? Can you take out a lot of point defense or other defenses in the area? And if that's not the case, if all those high value areas are spread out around the perimeter of the base, uh, typically you're not gonna wanna go with HGHB. Think about doing a different strategy. Typically, air attacks can be good because you can target so many defenses directly. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. That's going to be the last attack for today, guys. I should have a recap, like I said, coming out uh, probably tomorrow, uh, showing maybe even some attacks on these bases so you can see how they were eventually three-starred, but maybe some different bases as well. So be looking for that. hope you guys like this series. Let me know if you want me to continue doing it. This is only the second episode, so I'm still kind of seeing how you guys like it right now. But yeah, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to check that out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.